name is Alex Rafalovic. I'm the executive director of the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty Initiative. This is a civil society initiative joined by over 1,500 organizations from every corner of the world, every continent, most countries. It includes indigenous nations, trade unionists, uh, faith institutions, churches and mosques uh, and synagogues. Uh, it includes youth activists, includes parents who are activists, includes scientists, academics, universities. Uh, it includes traditional climate change activists, but it also includes human rights activists, debt and tax justice activists. It is a movement of people who are calling for a global plan for a world without fossil fuels. We all want to ensure that we can protect our families and our lives, our livelihoods, and the living systems that sustain our life. So we have come together to call for a global plan to address the threat of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, are the principal source of the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh, in the last decade. 86% uh, of the CO2 in the atmosphere has come from these three fuels. So they are the biggest driver of climate change, coal, oil, and gas, and they also drive the extinction crisis, putting animal and plant species at the risk of extinction because we rip them up in order to extract more coal, oil or gas, or we have spills and contaminate and pollute the environment, stopping uh, those animal and plant species from being able to live, or the change in the temperature, the change in the acidity of the ocean, the change in the weather patterns means that those living species can no longer live. And even more insidiously, the fossil fuel industry, the big companies of coal, oil and gas, Shell, Total, uh, Exxon, Whitehaven, they plan to convert some of the oil that they're extracting into the plastic products that then further pollute our rivers, our oceans, uh, and are now starting to infect even our bodies. The Fossil Fuel Treaty Initiative is a proposal for governments to get together and address the question of fossil fuels. The world in Paris set a goal to limit the global warming to 1.5 degrees, to try and keep the world as safe as possible from climate change. Yet, the Paris Agreement does not talk about coal, oil and gas. It only mentions the emissions at the very end, the greenhouse gases at the very end. There isn't a focus on the extraction and production of fossil fuels. So, for a long time, across many peoples and movements, there has been a call to end the expansion of this industry. We have seen it from the Ogoni people in Nigeria. We have seen it from the people of the Pacific. We have seen it uh, from uh, many environmental organizations starting in 2002. But after the Paris Agreement came into effect, many of us became concerned that although it was such an important landmark direction setter, a light on the hill guiding us, it did not have enough detail and enough teeth to look at the fossil fuel industry. And so we began with organizations, some from Africa, from Kenya, from Latin America, from Peru, from Malaysia, from the Philippines, uh, from Nepal, from Canada, from Sweden, to say what we need is a new approach, a new international agreement. And that agreement needs to do three things. One. It needs to agree that there should be no new fossil fuel expansion. That is not saying we close overnight what we already have. It's saying no new. We shouldn't have any new extraction of oil, coal or gas because we already have enough. The science shows us we have enough fossil fuels under production to be able to power us into a transition 
to more renewable energy. Two, those plans actually are more than enough. They're more than enough for us, which is good, but they are more than enough than the planet can sustain. They currently are planning, according to the UN Environment Program, 110% more coal, oil, and gas than would be compatible with the Paris target. We need to do something about those plans. The only way to do it is to first say no new fossil fuel production. No new fossil fuel production means no new loans, no new investments, no new licenses, no new permits. We need to stop. People talk about a transition, a transition to a new energy future, but you are not transitioning if you are still expanding the old version. So number one, let us stop the expansion of this industry. Number two, we then need a plan to equitably phase down production because as I said, we have more than enough, more than 110% more than is compatible with 1.5 degrees. So we need to find a way to agree between countries how and when and where we will begin to phase down our production and to do it in a way that is equitable so that countries that have, say, a higher reliance on fossil fuels for their uh, export revenues to stabilize their currency or for their labor share or for their um, domestic energy needs can then uh, plan for how they, they exit from the reliance or dependency on that production. The, the, the idea that we can simply let the market decide, that we simply let the bankers in London or New York or Frankfurt uh, or, or Hong Kong decide that where and when people can have jobs and produce energy or not is a recipe for disaster. There are, in this world today, 600 million people living in a country that has more than 50% dependence of government revenues on fossil fuel production. We need a serious plan to try and diversify the income streams in those countries so that we can have the services that we need, the health services, the education services, the, the, na the natural parks, the protections of the spaces that we love and love to be in. So that's step two, get an equitable plan to phase down the production and I am saying steps but these are steps we're all taking at the same time it is not one after the other because we need right now a plan for a global just transition that means that we are actually ensuring access to energy for everybody on this earth we are calling for a plan to ensure that everybody has enough energy for lives of dignity. People will try and tell you that we need fossil fuels to deliver energy to people. They will try and tell you that coal and oil and gas are the pathway to prosperity. And it is the easiest lie to disprove because the evidence is right in front of our face. We have had coal, oil and gas for 200 years and what has it given us? It has given us a billion people on this planet without access to energy and another billion people with very limited access to energy. The fossil fuel system has created a world of energy poverty and a world of private profit. Because if you look where these plans for the expansion of coal, oil and gas are and where they have happened, they are not the richest most prosperous places in the world. We can see it, whether it's what's happened in Mozambique the last 10 years, or whether it's what happened in La Guajira in, in Colombia, the sites of fossil fuel extraction are not the most prosperous parts of our world. In fact, often, sadly, they are parts that have been sacrificed in the interests of profit. So we need a different type of energy system if we're to deliver energy to everybody on this planet. And that is one of the core demands of our vision for a fossil fuel phase-out treaty.
getting energy to everybody and supporting the diversification of economies away from fossil fuel reliance. Currently, the UN system, when it thinks about climate finance, it talks about the finance for the, the green projects, the one-off green projects or the adaptation projects getting us ready for the impacts of climate change. It does not talk about how do we support an economy to diversify away from a dependency and a reliance on fossil fuels. So that's the vision and the demand of the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty Initiative. And we are calling for it at all levels of our lives. We are calling for local governments, town councils, mayors, state governments to make declarations supporting the idea of non-proliferation of fossil fuels, no new fossil fuels. And so, for example, in Uganda with the, the East African crude oil pipeline, we hope that our campaign will demonstrate why we need an international agreement to stop new infrastructure like that, to provide alternative, real, real alternative development pathways for the people and in the interests of the people and the towns of Uganda, Tanzania and the other countries to which that, that plans to go. That is paid for with the compensation and the reparations that are due to people living across Africa from the governments and the companies like Total who have extracted so much profit from the, the shared resources and natural world of Africa, of Latin America, of Asia. So uh, that's our vision. Uh, we are calling for it, as I said, uh, to local governments to declare that they are non-proliferation zones, that they want to stop new fossil fuel infrastructure where they are, that they want to have an equitable phase out, that they want to plan a just transition. And we're calling it on governments. We want to see the governments, particularly of the global north, that have had the biggest historical responsibility for climate change to come forward and recognize that they must play a leading role in supporting the world to shift off fossil fuels.